Hey guys, it's 1 in the morning, and I couldn't think of anything else better to do with my evening than to make this video. Anyway, this is the newest updated version of Arctic Keys, which was updated three days ago. Um, all it really is, is some fixed minor bugs in this app. So, I remember some people had a problem with the mod wheel, being that uh, for live performances, if you put your finger on it, you have to place it on this black box directly uh, for it to scroll up and down, which gets kind of annoying because it's really small. Anyway, now they made it so wherever you press on the wheel, uh, the black box will automatically go to that area. So I guess that uh, solves that problem. There's still a bug that I really don't like that bugs me. I <laughs> get it. Um, it's the presets. For example, if I have this preset loaded up, and let's say I close or minimize Arctic Keys and like after two hours I go back to it it won't play anymore you have to select a different preset in order this, for this app to play again so that's why I don't like I hope they fix that soon because uh, it does get annoying well uh, that's basically it so if you already know how to use this app you can go ahead and skip this the remainder part of this video if you want to learn how to use it then you can continue to watch. So let's get into the tutorial. Alright, so Arctic Keys. Arctic Keys is a really simple app to use. For new users, you just need to get the hang of it. And just like all my other videos, I'm going to go over with everything first. So, when you open up this app, you see the main screen, which is currently displaying the synthesizer. It comes with five different uh, main tabs, which are the synthesizer, the sequencer, effects, x, y, pad, and the preference settings. Down here you see this is your standard keyboard, the piano keys. There's actually three modes you can select for the piano keys, which are uh, the pitch mode, the glissando mode, and the scroll mode. Right now I'll set to the pitch mode, which allows you to bend the pitch using my fingers. When I have it selected as glissando mode, it allows me to glide throughout the keys. And finally, scroll allows me to scroll through the regions of the keys. Next to that is, uh, this tab is for your scale settings. So if you want to pick a different scale, you could do so here. Panic allows you to stop any notes that are being played if they're stuck or hanging. Uh, right here, these are your key size settings. Right now set to medium, you can set it as large or small. I'm going to go with large. And hold, when you have hold selected, it holds down the key, or excuse me, the note that's being pressed. This is really useful, so say you want to change the waveform or the filter settings or the LFO settings, and you can't quite hear the difference, when you have hold selected, you could hold down the note and you could use it that way to hear the difference. Unison is extra voices. Now this whole synthesizer has different modes. Right now it's in mono mode. Um, there's also poly and legato. And also, uh, when you have arpeggiator mode selected, it plays whatever you set in the arpeggiator. Same as the step sequencer. Next to that, these are octave settings. So you could just octave higher or lower. These are your standard pitch and modulation views. Okay, over here these are your oscillators, um, oscillator 1, oscillator 2, your standard oscillators. It also comes with the standard waveforms which are the sawtooth, square, and triangle. Pulse width allows you to adjust the width of your waveform and uh, semitone allows you to tune your oscillator. Envelope modulation allows you to control the amount of the envelope that modulates your oscillator. And these settings, these knobs are also in oscillator 2. Except oscillator 2 has detune, and also um, you can press sync to sync the time with the BPM. They set this to. There's a little mixer here for the oscillators. Uh, oscillator mix allows you to pan from oscillator 1 to oscillator 2. OSC volume, oscillator volume is the control for your overall output for oscillators. And this is your ring modulation and your noise. On the right hand side you see this is your filter, 
You can select a low pass filter, a high pass filter, or a band pass filter, as well as notch. And for the slope, you can select 12 dB, which is 2 poles, or 24 dB, which is 4 poles. Okay, um, there's also an envelope modulation knob here, which allows you to uh, control the envelope, um, the amount of which the envelope modulates the filter. It also has a cutoff and a resonance uh, setting here. Key follow. Key follow adjusts the amount of which the filter tracks the keyboard. As you can see here, these are standard attack, decay, sustain, release. Um, curve allows you, if you see here, there's a curve, allows you to, um, it gives you like a default curve. If you want to hear the difference, you could just select that. Okay, uh, down here, these are your standard LFO settings, as well as the amp attack the case sustain and release. It also has a curve button here too. Sync allows you to sync with the time uh, that I set the BPM to. Okay, um, when you want to select between LFO 1 and LFO 2, you press this button here. And you can select um, the filter cutoff or you can select anything you like. Oscillator 1 pitch. Okay, key right here, um, when you have key selected, um, it restarts the LFO each time a new note is being played. Wave, uh, these are your waveforms you can select. And send allows you to send a signal, so you can send it to, again, the filter cutoff, you can send it to filter resonance. This is your amount, frequency, and fade-in settings. Okay, so that's basically everything you need to know about the synthesizer. You could change the preset by selecting the top. It will give you a preset bank. And also, if you want to save a preset, you just press save. And if you want to record, press the record button. The record button, um, oh man, it crashed. Let me open it up again. So actually, this app is still quite buggy. Um, but hopefully they fix all the problems in this app. When you want to select the recording settings, you go to the preferences and the recorder, which allows you to select the metronome settings and so on. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead into the sequencer. Okay, so when you have the sequencer um, tab selected, you can select four, up to four different tracks to play simultaneously which means all at the same time. Now what I don't like about uh, the sequencer is how you have to turn on and turn off and stop. Uh, for example, when you want to turn on which notes are being played, you have to go ahead and select every single one of these blue buttons at the top. And blue means it's turned on. Red means uh, allows you to record, like for example, Whenever, whatever region you have uh, for the note that's being pressed, it'll give you like a kind of velocity. Like I'll show you for example. And you can see I'm changing the velocity by pressing the region and the keys. Green is stop. Um, I don't know why they chose green as stop, but green is stop. So for example, you want the sequencer to stop around here. You press. 8 and it'll stop at 8 and it'll keep looping. I'm going to go ahead and turn this all on. Okay, so my track 1 is probably selected as noise. Yes, it is. Okay, so you can hear noise. When I tune it down, it should not play any noise at all. And as you can see, um, when I'm playing a note, you can see in the step sequencer it's being played as well. I'm going to zoom in so you can see. Okay, so you can select up to four different tracks. Track two is set to filter cutoff. Track three, I'm going to have it set to amp attack. Track four, I'll set it to 
uh, I'll go with filter release. So again, you could use, if you're lazy, like me, and you don't want to adjust all the individual velocities, you could just press uh, the red button, which is record. And it'll record in the velocity, uh, depending on the region of the keys you're playing. So the sequencer is quite easy to use. Um, the third tab here is the effects. I personally feel like the arpeggiator is really useless in this application. And I wanted to say a bad word, but I'm just going to say useless instead of the bad word. Okay, you can select the uh, octave, and you can select the pattern going up, down, up, down, assign, and also a random pattern. And also here are your shuffle settings and your the rates. But that's basically it. It's really limited on the settings for the arpeggiators. So I personally wouldn't like to use it. These are your effect settings, your effect bank, uh, this is the EQ, distortion, chorus, and delay. And to turn it on, just press the active button. Here are all the knobs for the settings. You got your high, your mid, your low, level, uh, dry, wet for the, the, uh, for the chorus, frequency, you could just the depth, delay, and the feedback. Here are your delay settings, pan left and right, dry or wet, the time, and you could just the color and the feedback as well. You can also sync it with the time. Uh, the, you can sync it to the tempo of your BPM. This is your master settings for your effects. You could uh, adjust the bend range, portamento, glide, and the slide curve. XY is for, let's say you want to use two paths for performing. You got X uh, and Y settings, you could adjust here. Right now, so to filter decay, you can select LFO1, uh, frequency, LFO1 and mount 1, mount 2, mount 3, and etc. This is the same for your other pad here. So when I play, you can you can play around with it. The right pad is for your modulation and the left pad is for your pitch. Okay, These are your preferences settings, so if you want to change the tempo of uh, your project, you can select it here. You can change the key. Um, here's your MIDI options. So you can select the MIDI channels here, as well as uh, the MIDI port section settings and the MIDI network driver settings. This uh, system pad allow uh, panel allows you to select initialize, which turns off the entire preset to default. That's basically it. If you have any other questions for this app, please let me know. Uh, leave me a message and a comment, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you think this tutorial isn't good enough, you can go ahead. If you think this tutorial sucks, you can press this little question mark here, which will tell you roughly what everything is. Okay, thanks for watching, and have a good day.